So you clicked on this video because you possibly got 16, 17, 18, or even 19 kills and just shy of a 20 bomb. Well, not to worry. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get 20 kill games in Apex Legends Season 10. Hey, what's happening, Champion Squad? Welcome, your beautiful faces, back to the channel. In today's video, not only I'm going to break down this entire game on plays that I make, but I'm also going to be going over five crucial tips to help get you your first 20 bomb game. Tips such as where to land, your weapon loadout, keeping a fast pace, and making sure to get quick and clean squad wipes on top of luck of the lobby is going to be huge. And I'm going to be breaking those down in depth throughout this entire game. So be sure to relax, sit back, and enjoy the video. So we're landing capacitor here and I ping the top spot, which is going to be where I'm going to land. That way I keep all the enemies up in front of me. Notice how many teams here. A lot of teams Wraith Labs, a lot of teams landing capacitor. Is this a good drop? Absolutely. So when it comes to getting good drops in Apex Legends for a 20 kill game or just high kill games in general, you need to be landing local to where a lot of the teams are landing. Number one, that's going to give you early kills, free kills. And number two, your chain fights will be connected. So you're not going to have to rotate too far to find your next opponent. So do you have to land capacitor every single game to get a 20 bomb game? Absolutely not. You can go anywhere you want based on your lobby and where people are deciding to land. So I landed up topside here because that's going to give me my loot safely. If there was a team contesting me here, probably just one team. So it's going to be a fair 50-50 gamble based on loot. And then we go from there. But luckily I had it to myself, but I do hear someone taking the zip line up on me. Pick up an easy knock on Mirage. She was already cracked. No armor there. Look at the Wraith. Go for the immediate chow. She wasn't looking at me. Ended up downing her. She had purple. Now I'm looking to get the quick shield swap. Going from a blue to a purple. Can't finish her, which is so unfortunate. I got another enemy in front of me. And you guys are not going to believe what happens in this game. So I go up and absolutely choke the zipline play trying to escape. And right now my team's nowhere near me. He's invested into this fight. Can he res? Leave in the comments right now before you even watch this video or continue watching, should I say. Leave down in the comments. Do I survive or not? So as you can tell, I managed to escape. You can notice that team right away was, they were sweaty. These slide jumping everywhere, being very aggro, looking for the next kill. So they're going to be a good team I do have to look out for. Team it was able to res, which was nice. He stayed alive down low, not taking any fights, not causing a distraction. So I'm going to full heal here. And notice I see people down low. So that's going to get me an opportunity to get my first fair fight in. Because those first initial fights, those were, you know, pretty banter fights. They were weak already. They weren't looking at me. So we covered where to land. The next thing I want to cover here is actually my weapon loadout. As you can tell, I have the flatline R99. That's going to have my mid to long range covered as well as my close range. The R99 is a beast. There's some good shots there. Beautiful recoil on the R99 to clean up that. That's another kill to my name. So we're sitting at three kills, 33 up. Now in this game, am I thinking to myself, this is a 20 bomb game right now. I have to get this. Absolutely not. I always say when you're going for high kill games or high damage games, Play your intro out how it normally would be played. The beginning of the game, don't force yourself to do crazy stuff. Play it out, have a good time, enjoy yourself. Then mid-game, you want to check your stats. Let's take a look at this fight here, though. Right now, I'm sort of bantering around, waiting for this hero to go away. I don't even feel like investing myself right now. I don't have the most loot. They destroy my teammate, so I have to peek here, make sure they're not pushing. That guy's just about cracked, and I also cracked the other one. So right now, did the damage, held them off. They got the better of the exchange on my teammate, so I needed to do that crucial damage, so that way they don't push. Now I'm getting a little bit more confident here, a little, a little more aggressive. Absolutely destroy this here, and that's an insta push right away when you're playing duos. You only have to worry about one other person that's going to be pushing you after you make one weak. 
And then you can make a quick escape just like that. I get the quick knock, pick it up. Then I'm off the scene, change my position. He made the tracks fuse, and I go for that cleanup. Now we're getting third party here. Before this actually plays out, I want to let you guys know that this is crucial. When you come out of a fight, and especially when you're playing with a random teammate in duos, look at his health. He's very low. You can't probably see it from the title, but he's very low. I'm not even max HP, and now we're getting thirded. They threw a C-roll down. They're ready for us. What you have to do in this situation is one of two things. You're either going to run away, and that means your teammate is 100% going to die, especially if they have no mobility. Mirage, yes, you can get lucky here and there with the bamboozles, but... This team's looking to get very aggressive on us right away. Popping ultimate, pushing down aggressive. So I'm going to sit here and actually deal damage. If I can crack one, that is going to be huge. I'll relieve a lot of the pressure. And that's going to help my teammate get a bat off and get him back in the fight. That's what I'm looking here. If I don't do this initial damage here, which is huge, things are going to go south very quickly. So let's see how it plays out. And boom, that's a beautiful crack. Now I'm looking to reposition here. So he gets very aggressive. He gets one mag with the flatline. That's why I love it. And now notice what I do here. Here's the fuse. I originally cracked this guy first when they both came in. Got the one mag on the seer, which was very clutch. Now it's a fair 1v1 here. Yes, I'm cracked. Did he take a bat? Possibly. But what I'm going to do instead of heal behind this rock is I'm going to challenge this guy. Number one, because he's going to be wide in the open. There's no cover around here. And I'm playing my cover. I have a left to right cover here so I can bait in some shots, peek when I want to play my game. When it's getting very hectic on you and you're getting pushed from multiple people, you need to play your game, play your cover. That's exactly what I did here. I'm not going to heal. I'm going to catch him out in the open here. So he's pushing up again, no cover whatsoever. He's getting antsy because his teammate went down and that's a lot of the times how these lobbies go. Once you knock one of their teammates, the second one will follow up right away. They get very nervous, they get antsy, they don't want to have sort of a long extended fight. So expect early pushes right away after a single knock. Here you go, he's pushing in the open. Beautiful 140 on him, hit him with another 19, he's about 30 HP here. Go for the reach out. And that's a beautiful squad wipe. Yes, Mirage went down, but he did his thing. Helped me get the squad wipe there. We're sitting with 7 kills, 1400 damage, 26 up. Now you guys are probably thinking... Is he thinking about the 20 bomb game right now? Actually, no. In this game right now, I was not thinking about it. I'm going to let you guys know the exact moment that I thought to myself, you know what? This is a 20 bomb game. Let me focus up here, get very aggressive and really play for this 20 kill game. Bear with me. It's not there yet. But nevertheless, this is a beautiful start to the game. And one thing I want to touch on before we actually move forward is I am playing Valkyrie. And the next tip is going to be keeping a fast pace in the game. So once you wipe your squad, you need to loot quick and rotate right away. Notice where players landed originally and sort of rotate to that area. So Wraith Labs is a possible choice, but it's not in zone. So I'm going to go past Wraith Labs with this ult. And I'm playing Valkyrie, and that's going to be huge for me because then we can spend more time looting. Not that I did, but again, it's going to be good for helping my teammate rotate with me. If he spends too much time looting, I can get him over with me right away with the ult. Sort of flying into zone here, and I notice a squad down low on me. What we're going to do here... Since they're down low, not only am I going to take better positioning than them by getting height, but I'm also going to be gaining them out. If you look at the mini map here, I'm going to land behind them here. So that way I'm forcing their backs to the zone when it closes. What that's going to do is put a lot of pressure on them and force them to fight in a bad angle. And that's going to help me get the squad wipe there. So I'll let it play out so you guys can see. Again, landing height, forcing their back to the zone. And go for the immediate repeak. Don't give them time to take cover. Don't give them time to take positioning and you know they're going to be close, get to the exchanges right away. Crack here, he's very low. Pick up the knock with a weapon swap. His teammates way out there. You know, if I did, if I gave him time to rotate and do what he, he was going to do, they're going to start holding hands, playing cover. So that's beautiful. Catching enemies off guard, uh, not letting them hold hands together and making it a tougher fight. His teammate starts coming in. Throws a beautiful thermite on me. That was a good throw. And then I stunned myself with my own tack there. So I'm going to rip it back here. I already have one knocked, so it's not looking too bad. Push up to see if he's there. And actually, he valked out. So he made a good play. Am I going to worry about him? Absolutely not. I'm going to let him do his own thing. If anything, he's going to grab the banner and res his teammate, which is more kills. But he lands on top of the bone there. 
And actually when I'm playing, you see how he's up there? I did not see that guy up on the bones there. Let me back it up real quick. This guy landed up here. This is the Valkyl that hit me. I think I was like, how, did, how am I getting stunned by this? Where is this coming from? That's because I'm getting shot at by the tree line here. So I'm going to see how this plays out. I was looking to take a cell, but then I got hit for another 50 damage so at that point. Waste my last bat. And that's actually important to talk about. Use your bats. Yes, it's important to save them, but only save them when you're in a safe situation. There we go. That's a nice cleanup on the Valk. That was the Valk on the bones there. So Insta died because we killed his Mirage teammate earlier. My teammate actually ends up picking up a kill too, which is awesome. Now we're sitting with 9 kills, 1900 damage, and guess what guys, yes, finally it's it. This is the point of the game where I thought to myself, you know what, this is a 20 bomb game. And I say 7 to 10 kills when you have 20 or more alive is a juicer of a game to get the 20 kill badge. So notice how I'm ahead of my teammate. Again, my teammate is a little bit slower with the looting. When you have a 20 bomb game potential, you need to be on your toes, constantly rotating, constantly looking for enemies. And constantly getting ready to put out the damage. So that's why I'm way ahead of him right now. I don't have my Valko to rotate with him with me. You need a man up in this situation, especially if you're playing duos, and go off by yourself. So we got nine kills, 17 up. And I'm looking to, again, take the balloon, take advantage of my Valk passive where I can see enemies on the map when I'm in flight mode, whether that's a balloon rope or my ultimate, which I just got. And right now I don't see anyone. Start flying over. When you're flying with Valk, again, lock your zone in, lock your flight, and then look around you. And actually see people on height, so I'm instantly going to take height to take advantage of the positioning in the situation. So now they're underneath me. I have some easy cracks if they try to climb up. I noticed one off shooting at my teammate. That's easy shots there. Catch him off guard with a nice one mag. The flat line is insane. Close range. Such one mag potential. And again, I can't stress enough. Let's go ahead and get into the next tip is making sure to get fast squad wipes. When you extend your gunfight and your squad fights, what that's going to cause is cause multiple teams in the area start to rotate in on you, pressure you. And it's going to be a very tough and hectic situation that way. When you get quick squad wipes, you are the aggressor in other fights instead of the enemies being the aggressor in your fight so when you can do that that's going to help smooth out your games and really help you get this 20 bomb much easier and here we go so we had the team down load that was shooting at me now i'm working my way over because they are actually fighting i'm gonna go ahead and save my valkyl in this situation since i was pretty close already pick up somebody off guard in this fight which is nice again i'm being the aggressor in somebody else's fight instead of them being in my fight this was kind of a risky play here. I went for the finish. I didn't even get it. Figured I was in the corner there so no one can see me. Notice how fast I'm playing here. I'm not giving them the enemies any time to think. I'm making these split second decisions that are more in my favor. Again, that happens when you keep a fast pace and you get used to it. I'm going to come around back here, get some height. I notice this Mirage on me over here. Kind of take height from me. And the R99. Just doing absolute justice. Absolute God's work right there with the one mag. So we're sitting with 14 kills, 3300 damage, 11 alive. This is looking really good. And now, in terms of my loot, I'm kitted out of my mind. I have the best loot possible. The only thing I could probably use right now is some throwables. But I do have my Valk Tack, which I sort of consider like a throwable. Because it's used in the same way. To break doors down, to zone off enemies. So, with Valk, that's why I like Planer. You don't really need to carry too many throwables. So, we're Valking out here. Notice someone taking the blue in front of me. Guess what? When you have a 20 bomb in your head, you need to fight and kill any enemy you see. Just because I actually said to fight anyone you see, I actually want to break down this situation because there's actually multiple enemies here. 
You're going to think to yourself, which one should I push? Should I push the guy that landed up here? Should I push the guy that's down low? Which team should I fight? What should I do? Let's break it down. What I'm going to do here is land height. I don't want to fight the team down low because this team here, not only do they have height, if I drop down, they have easy angles on me. They can insta third party me. So I'm going to land height. Then I'm going to try and work this team on the left side. My goal here is to possibly get a knock. Make this team back off. This team backs off. Then I have a free fight down low here. It's going to spare me more time. That way they can't third party as easily. So I'm keeping the enemies in front of me. I don't want to drop down low. They have good angles. Again, that's a bad situation. And then if this team on the bottom tries to climb up on me, guess what? They have horrible angles. They have to work their way up and it's going to be easy one mag opportunities. Recoil control is pretty easy with the 9 as soon as you get it down pack, especially when you have a blue or higher stabilized. Right now I'm running a purple on it. And I got beautiful exchanges on this team here. But there's the turning point. I believe I just got Kraber or Sentinel. It's 200... And, yeah, that, I got uh, Kraber there. That's 150 damage. That was actually important. What Exactly what I just did there. So I got sniped. I start taking a bat. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to chill for one second. When I chill for one second here, that's going to allow me to hear footsteps to see if I'm getting pushed before I crank this syringe and full heal. In this situation like this, where they have a 50-50 chance of pushing you and you don't really know because you don't have a teammate watching over, calling out, since I wasn't partied up with this guy, do those little pauses during your gameplay before you start full healing. That way you can hear if they're going to be pushing up on you, and that way you're ready for it, and then you can capitalize on a different move instead of full healing with the syringe. So I'm going to sit... For literally for like two seconds I'm talking about just to hear footsteps and then I'm gonna full heal still at 14 kills 3500 damage 10 people alive it's winding down though so I really have to be on my toes here and start pushing these enemies this is where I was losing a little bit of patience because I haven't gotten in a real fight yet go down low just to see if they're ratting and they're not there so I'm like, you know what? I, I need to get aggressive on this team on height. The guys that ran away with that Kraber, maybe I can look to try and kill them next. See somebody shooting from the top rock. Yep, that's the Kraber dude. That guy sniped me earlier, so I know he has a decent shot. Start hitting him. Hit him flush there, actually. So he was getting shot from the other team as well. Now I'm thinking to myself, should I push this guy on top? Or should I just go down low? And fight those people down low. This is going to be a hard push. I know this player is decent. He can hit Kraber shots. He has red armor. It's going to be a tough fight for me to take. Because if I try to fly up there nice and slow. He's going to be pre-aiming me. And it's, it might go downhill. I don't want to throw a beautiful game like that. So I'm going to let that guy do his thing. But I do have to worry about his Kraber. So if I leave him alone. And he doesn't die. And I work the fight down low here to my left. His Kraber is lethal. I need to be paying attention to my movement, how I'm playing the fights down there, noticing my cover around me, and trying to give this guy blind spots when I'm fighting down there. Valk, attack him. Distract him for a bit. My team actually picks up a knock here. And we, we're fighting down low. We're getting invested here. Easier kills. It's a fair playing field. This guy's low, but I do have to be aware of that Kraber. This guy absolutely bamboozled me, hiding in the rock there. Go for the cleanup there. I get Kramered. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm like, you got to be kidding me in this situation. I'm looking my left. He, he does have a blind spot on me right now, so I'm looking good. Clean that guy up. He was pretty weak. My teammate did a fantastic job of staying alive here. Him going down in this situation could have possibly threw the 20. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting tagged from someone else on the hillside. I'm going to back up to my teammate. Make sure he gets his Feeny off. Notice how I'm playing Valky. I'm strafing left to right with these boosts. I'm not using a full boost throughout the entire time. I'm strafing left, boosting left once, boosting right, left, right. That's going to give me a lot of speed and different angles. It's going to be tougher for them to connect solid shots on me. So I'm ripping the bat here. Teammates doing an absolute beauty of a job staying alive. Love Mirages. That Revenant's getting slightly aggressive on me, so I'm looking to take a different angle on him. Whiffed some flatline shots. 
This guy's very weird though. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he was running around with his heirloom, just jumping in the water. Right, so he was one shot. He's dead. So we're at 17 kills, 4,100 damage, three squads left. It's getting down to the wire here. Get shot from a distance. My teammate's pretty close to him, so I'm like, I can't I can't afford to lose this kill. My teammate picks up this kill, that could be the end of the 20. And that that causes me to get absolutely fried. Me getting gantsy, thinking my teammate's gonna get the kill. And that's a big mistake on my part, actually. That's why I want to point that out. Trying to force kills, because when you force kills, that is what can happen. And you, you could possibly go down. I got lucky in this situation, was able to escape. Crank a bat. Almost get Krabert again. I am in shambles right now. Let's just say that. Teammate gets one mag with 301 there. Notice what I did there. I didn't full heal in the same spot. I took one bat, listened to see if I was getting pushed. Now I'm going to reposition, take a medkit. Constantly changing up my angles, making the enemies, or keeping, should I say, the enemies guessing on my position. So I'm playing a beautiful head glitch right now. And if you guys don't know what a head glitch is, when you play behind cover, just exposing your chest level and above, and you can still send out the shots. That's going to help me destroy this bloodhound. Quick weapon swap, finish him off. Keep that same heady. I'm not going to go for the finish here. I have some decent shields left. This is about blue armor with the shields. I'm going to keep the same heady because this is solid cover on when somebody's pushing you for you to get the better of the exchange. I think a big mistake a lot of players make is trying to get full health all the time when in reality, sometimes when you play your cover right, you don't need full health just because you have a, such a good exchange possibility in your hands. And if you can manage to pull it off, it's going to be wonderful for you. So crack the Loba, which is wonderful for me in that situation. Weapon swap, cleaner up. I'm telling you guys, R99 flatline combo, give it a shot. It is an absolute beast of a setup. All right, so we're sitting 19 kills. Hearts racing, 4,400 damage, man. We're chilling here. Teammate goes down, so I know I can't get this kill stolen. Last squad up. Right now, I'm thinking to myself, is this a solo or is this a duo? If this is a duo, I do have to play it slightly a little bit more passive, maybe back up. In this situation, if I was getting pushed by two, maybe I could have valked out with the trees hiding me and then reposition from there. But I quickly want to look to assess the situation. I want to see what's going on, see how many I'm getting pushed by since it's last squad. Go for a quick shield swap just in case if they're really close. Now they are, but I swap back to red because I do have some time to take this bat. He sent off some banter shots on me, but he was too far. Quick weapon swap, and she had no health, so that was a phenomenal down-to-the-wire game where I hit 20 even, about 4,400 damage, I believe, maybe 4,500, and we managed to pull it off. My first Valkyrie 20 bomb. Again, I haven't played too many games of Valk. I think I had like 300-something kills with her, not even 1,000 kills, but we were able to do it, and I'd say a good portion of it is luck of the lobby. On top of the tips I was talking about, luck of the lobby is crucial. Where you're landing, making sure enemies are landing local and a lot of enemies are there, chain fights, easy rotations. You don't need to rotate too far to find your next squad you want to fight. Keeping a fast pace and looting quickly. Doing all of that combined with a little bit of luck and winning your gunfights will bless you with a game like this. Duos is a little bit more manageable and sort of controlling in a way that you can control the game than if you were playing trio solo. But if you are genuinely looking for some high kill games, Playing duos is going to be much easier for you, especially when you're solo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap up today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you learned a thing or two or just needed a refresher and you enjoyed today's video, like rating is always appreciated. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, this was Sultan D. I'm signing off. Peace.